Hello, everyone. I'm Jerry Savell. Thank you for joining me today. And it is a privilege to bring you the Word of God each and every week. And we thank God for this opportunity. I pray that you will just relax for the next few moments and allow me to share some great biblical truths that I believe will make a winner in life out of you. That's what God desires. That's His plan. And so I believe that I've learned some things over the years that have helped me become a winner, and I know that they'll help you become the winner in life as well. So I want you to very pay very close attention. If it possible, jot down the Scripture references that we'll talk about. Study them later. And uh, please, if at all possible, I want to encourage you to write to me and let me know how that these messages are blessing you and inspiring you. We love hearing your testimonies. So take a few moments, share the testimony with us, and uh, please know that we welcome each and every prayer request, and we want you to know that we stand in faith with you, believing God for the miracles you need, for the breakthroughs you need. Our God is the God of the breakthrough. So today we're going to be talking about, and we're going to be dealing with this subject for the next few weeks, quitting is not an option. Say that out loud with me. Quitting is not an option. You know, at some point in your life, you need to make that decision. If you don't make that decision at some point, you're going to be faced with the temptation to give up every time it gets hard, every time it gets difficult, every time it looks impossible. And you know, that's what the devil wants you to do. He wants you to just quit. He wants you to just throw in the towel, so to speak. He wants you to just walk away, turn your back on God, and just say it's not worth it. Well, listen, it is worth it, and God is on your side, and He's promised that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So what you need to do is make the quantity decision that quitting is no longer an option. Now, once again, you need to make that decision right now so that it's settled once and for all. You know, I began this walk of faith back in 1969. And prior to that, I was a quitter. I looked for opportunities to quit. In fact, I I always looked for the path of least resistance. That was somewhat my nature. But once I got a hold of the Word of God, once I began to find out that I didn't have to quit, that I didn't have to accept failure and defeat, then praise God, my life began to change. That was a long, long time ago. In fact, 49 years ago. And if you ask anybody that knows me well, I do not quit. I do not give up. I do not accept failure or defeat. And praise God, I have mastered the art of standing on the Word of God. The Apostle Paul said, having done all to stand, stand. In other words, you just keep standing because if you're willing to stand and refuse to give up, then God is going to come through for you. That's a guarantee. So let me encourage you today, make the decision that quit is no longer an option. Say that with me. Quitting is no longer an option in my life. Come on, say it one more time. Quitting is no longer an option in my life. Now, if you have your Bibles with you, let's open them to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, and I'd like to read verse 23, first of all. It simply says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. He is faithful that promised. That's one of the reasons why that I refuse to quit, because God's Word says that He's faithful that promised. Who else do you know that is so reliable as God? Who else do you know is so, uh, de- so uh, that you were so able to depend upon? That's what I'm trying to say. Who else do you know that will not back off His promise. He will see to it that it is fulfilled. All He asks for us or out of us is that we be willing to stand on it, that we take Him at His word, that we refuse to back down. And sometimes I realize that's not the easiest thing to do. But if you make the decision that quitting is no longer an option, then it becomes easier and easier. In fact, it becomes lifestyle. I don't even think about quitting anymore. That is not something that that I have to deal with. I just know that I know that I'm going to stand on the Word of God, no matter how impossible it looks, no matter how long it takes, because God has been coming through for me for 49 years, and I don't believe that He's going to change. I believe that He is faithful that promise. Say that with me. My God is a faithful God. Say it again. My God is 
a faithful God. Now notice here it says, hold fast to the profession, or another translation says confession. Hold fast to the confession of your faith without wavering. That means without doubting, without giving up, without turning back. Why? Because he is faithful that promise. Now often, and I realize this, during our endeavors to trust God and to walk by faith, we're tempted to give up. We're tempted to quit. Many times it looks like we're just wasting our time. Many times it looks as though um, it's to no avail. But that's what the devil wants you to think. See, this is where he deals the most with, or this is what he deals the most with, your mind, your thinking. That's what he wants to uh, uh, plant the thought. That's where he wants to plant the thoughts that God cannot be depended upon, that his word is not forever settled in heaven. His word is not true. His word is not real, and it can't be depended upon. That's what the devil wants you to think. And if you ever have those thoughts, then you know where they came from. And the apostle Paul says that we are to cast down every thought, every imagination that is contrary to the word of God. So if you have the thought, it's not going to work. It's impossible. Where do you think that came from? Is it something that you discovered from the Word of God? No, it's not. So it's a thought that was planted there by the adversary, and your responsibility is to cast it down. And the quicker you cast it down, the better off you'll be. If you just let it set there in your mind, eventually it's going to get harder and harder to get rid of. So the moment that a negative thought comes into your mind, cast it down. Take authority over it. Say it out loud. Don't just think it cast it down and do it with force. Do it out loud. You simply say, Satan, I reject that thought. I will not allow that thought to reside in my mind. That is contrary to what God's word says. That's contrary to what God's promise says. And I refuse to allow it to stay in my mind. So notice here he says, hold fast the confession of your faith without wavering because he is faithful that promise. Say that with me again. I want to get you to say that often throughout this broadcast. My God is a faithful God. And that has got to be settled in your heart once and for all. Remember that God's word is true. God's word can be depended upon. He is a faithful God. Don't ever forget that. Don't ever let go of that because that's your motivation for standing. That's why you just decide that once you take that step of faith, you are not going to back off until you see the Word of God fulfilled in your life, regardless of how long it takes. So I want to encourage you, get into your spirit, deeply rooted into your spirit, that my God is a faithful God and His Word will not return void. Hey, listen, I want you to watch this special announcement, and then we'll be back to finish this lesson in just a moment. God will never say it's over until you win. In Quitting is Not an Option, Jerry Savelle teaches what the Bible says about conquering the temptation to quit. In this encouraging four CD series, you will learn how to stay focused in faith by being truly convinced God will keep his word, being willing to wait by developing patience, and being in fellowship with God in his word. You can receive victory in every area of your life. God is looking for a group of winners to rise up and show the world that he is greater. In the powerful book, called to battle, destined to win, Jerry shares how you can experience God's breakthrough power in your life. God will provide everything you need to pursue, overtake, and recover what has been lost. Are you ready to win? Call or go online to jerrysavelle.org and request the Born to Win package, including Quitting is Not an Option and Call to Battle, Destined to Win. Make the decision today to never give up, to never quit, and to watch what your persistence will produce. Hey, listen, at the end of the broadcast, we'll show you that promotion again, just in case you didn't have time to write it down. But I want to encourage you, make your plans to order these special resources because they are faith building and they'll help you learn how to make quitting no longer an option in your life. Amen. So let's get back to our lesson. 
Once again, Hebrews 10, 23, let us hold fast the profession or the confession of our faith without wavering, for He is faithful, that promise. Then verse 22 from the Amplified, just back up one more verse. The Amplified version says this, let us approach God with a true and sincere heart in unqualified assurance of faith. I like the sound of that, in unqualified assurance of faith. Notice that you can have assurance when you live by faith, when you walk the faith walk, praise God. God says that you can be assured. What can you be assured of? That He is true, that He's not a man that He should lie, that His Word will be fulfilled. That's what keeps me going, praise God. You know, if I didn't think that God's Word was true, then I wouldn't be able to stand. I wouldn't be able to resist the temptation to quit. But I know that I know that God's Word is true. I know that I know that God is faithful. And I know that I know that if I refuse to give up, then He will make it come to pass. So that's my motivation, praise God. That's the assurance that I have that when I stand on God's Word, He will not let me down. Now, you might say, well, I know people that have stood on the Word and it didn't come to pass. Well, you, you have to you have to let go of all those uh, negative reports. You know, I know people that said, well, we stood on the Word and it didn't come to pass, but I'm sorry that it didn't work for them, but I can't base my faith on their experiences. I'm going to base my faith on the Word of God. Now, I'm, I'm not trying to be hard, but the Bible says it will work. And if you're listening to people that says it won't work, then who are you going to believe? I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. I choose to believe God's Word. I'm sorry about the people that it didn't look like it's working for, but I'm determined that I'm going to stick to God's Word no matter what's happening with anybody else because I've learned that if I stick with God's Word, He will bring it to pass. And you need to make that decision as well. What do you believe in God for right now? How impossible does it look? Well, if it looks impossible, then you're just going to have to make the decision that quitting is not an option. Yeah, but how long do I have to stand, Brother Jerry? Well, I like to say it this way. When the Apostle Paul said, having done all to stand, stand therefore, notice you can't wedge anything between stand, stand. <laughs> In other words, I like to look at it like this. There's no room for quitting. There's no opportunity for giving up. Having done all to stand, stand. Say that with me. Stand, stand. Notice you can't wedge anything between stand, stand. So how long does it take? It just takes as long as you're willing to stand. Well, how long is that? Well, it just takes as long as you're willing to stand. Yeah, but how long is that? You're not listening. It takes as long as you're willing to stand. Uh, you know, you have to get to the place to where you're willing to stand forever if that's what it takes. But if you're willing to stand forever, then like Kenneth Hagin used to say, then it won't take very long. So make the decision that quitting is not an option. Now, let's look at uh, the Amplified Version for verse 23. He is reliable and trustworthy and faithful to His Word. He is reliable, trustworthy, and faithful to His Word. Now, if you know what the Word of God says, and you know what God has promised, then that's your foundation, praise God. No matter what's going on around you, no matter what anybody else is experiencing, your foundation for your faith is what God's Word has promised. Isaiah chapter 55, 11, it says, My word that goes forth out of my mouth will not return unto me void. It will accomplish that which I please, and it will prosper in the thing whereunto I have sent it. The message translation reads this way. The words that have come out of my mouth will not come back empty handed. They'll do the work that I sent them to do. They'll complete the assignment that I gave them. I love the sound of that. Every promise of God has an assignment. That assignment is to be fulfilled. God doesn't make promises that he doesn't intend to fulfill. Now people do, but God doesn't. He's not a man that he should lie. He doesn't exaggerate. He doesn't promise something 
and then, you know, back away from it. No, he gives his word and he intends to keep his word. He's not like people. He keeps his word. And he says every promise that he has given us, and there are many in the word of God, every promise that he's given us has an assignment. And that assignment is to be fulfilled in your life. If God's word says that he shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, that's Philippians 4:19. that's a promise from God, then God has placed an assignment on that promise. And that assignment is be fulfilled. And that's the reason I'm standing on it. That's the reason that I'm believing God for it. I, that's the reason that I won't quit. I know that God is interested in every minute detail of my life. He cares about my needs. He even cares about my wants and he cares about my desires and he's promised to do something about them. Now I have a part to play. He's not just going to make all of this happen without me doing my part. My part is to trust him. My part is to release my faith. The Bible says it's impossible to please God without faith. So if I release my faith and my trust in him, that's my part, and I refuse to give up, then his part is to see to it that his word comes to pass. Now, folks, I've been living this way now for 49 years. And if it didn't work, don't you think I would have found out by now? And if it didn't work, then I'd be preaching something else. But it works, praise God. And thank God I have this great testimony that God has never let me down. Not one time in 49 years. Now, I'll tell you what, there's been some tough times and there's been some challenging times and there have been some times where it looked like it was never going to come to pass, but I just made up my mind that quitting is not an option. Have you done that so far? If you haven't, say it with me right now. Quitting is no longer an option in my life. Stand with that. Take that and run with it, praise God. Don't back off because God wants to fulfill every promise that you find in his word. His desire is to fulfill it in your behalf. Why else would he give it if he didn't intend to fulfill it? Can you say amen? Why would he make promises if he didn't intend to fulfill them? So once you find from the word of God, if it's healing you need, then go to the word of God. Find out what he says by his stripes, ye were healed. The Bible says that you've been redeemed from every sickness and every disease. You've been redeemed from the curse of the law. Now take that, stand on it. I've done that. Praise God. In fact, you're looking at a walking miracle right now. I've, I had a, a situation in my life uh, just a short time ago, maybe, oh, I don't know, 18 months ago or so, where in the natural, uh, I wasn't to be normal again. Uh, I was to never preach the gospel again. I was to never travel again. I experienced a stroke and it left me with uh, this arm completely paralyzed, my right leg partially paralyzed, uh, total memory loss. I didn't even know my family. I couldn't think of one scripture, couldn't think of one sermon that I'd ever preached before. And it looked like that I was just going to be a vegetable for the rest of my life. But God, hallelujah. Does everybody shout, but God. Oh, I got to preach on me now. But God promised me that he would fulfill the length of my days. And I knew that my course had not been finished. I knew that God still had more for me to do. And the moment they released me from that hospital, within a matter of about three days, I was totally normal again. In three weeks, I was out preaching around the world. Do I look like a man who suffered a stroke? No, I don't. Praise God. And I want you to know that I stood on the word of God and God made it happen. That's why I'm encouraging you today. Don't allow quitting to be a part of your life any longer because God's no respecter of persons. If he would bring his word to pass in my life, then he will do it for you. But you have to be willing to stand and refuse to give up. Can you say amen? Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. This is important. You know this scripture. You've heard it probably many times before. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's what causes you to be able to be strong. That's what causes you to be able to not waver. That's what causes you to be able to be uncompromising is the more word you get into your heart, then the stronger your faith will become. 
See, quitting is not just a mental thing. I mean, it's, uh, let me say that again. Refusing to quit is not just a mental thing. It's a spiritual thing. Of course, your mind gets involved, but it begins in your heart. You have to make the decision in your heart that quitting is no longer an option. And the only way that you can ever get that way is by putting the Word of God in your heart in abundance. And the Word of God has a way of changing your thought process, changing the way you think. You see, once you fill your heart with the Word of God and you find out what His plan is for your life, then that causes a faith to arise on the inside of you that refuses to give up. I want to encourage you, spend more time in the Word of God. Spend as much time as possible in the Word of God. Why? Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. The more Word you put into your heart, the stronger your faith will become. And the stronger your faith becomes, then the more likely you are to be able to resist the devil when he's trying to tempt you to quit. In fact, eventually, over a period of time, it doesn't happen overnight, but over a period of time, you will get to the place to where quitting is no longer an option. You don't even think about it. You don't have to deal with it anymore. You just made up your mind a long time ago that we're going to stand and we're going to keep on standing until the promise is fulfilled. Praise God. Can you say amen with me? So once again, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Now let me wrap it up today with this. The message translation in Hebrews 10, 23 says this, let's keep a firm grip on the promises that keep us going because he always keeps his word. Let's keep a firm grip on the promises that keep us going because he always keeps his word. See, Jesus said in Mark chapter four, that once the word is sown in a person's heart, Satan comes immediately to steal the word. Now, that's why he attacks you. That's why he comes is because of the word that's in your heart. He knows that the word in your heart is capable of stopping his operations. He knows that the word that is in your heart is capable of defeating him, overcoming him. So that's what he's after, the word. So the Bible says, let's keep a firm grip on the promises that keep us going. When Satan is coming at you and saying, you'll never be healed, you'll never be blessed, you'll never have the finances you need, you'll never have the equipment you need, you'll never have the car you want, you'll never have the house that you're believing for. The Bible says, keep a firm grip. That's Satan trying to steal the word. Keep a firm grip on those promises. Don't let go of them, praise God. You know, if you're walking down the street and uh, uh, somebody reaches into your back pocket and tries to take your billfold. What are you going to do? You're just going to stand there and allow it to happen? Or are you going to reach back there and take a firm grip on your billfold, slap the guy's hand and uh, command him to, to, to leave or else? Hallelujah. I don't know what you would do, but uh, else sounds very good to me. Slap him. <laughs> uh, well, you may not slap him. Uh, like Kenneth Hagin used to say, tie him to a tree and pray for him all night. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. But you're not just going to allow somebody to take something of value that belongs to you. So why would you let the devil do that? No, you keep a firm grip on the promises that God has given you. Don't let Satan steal the word from you because he knows that it's the word that makes a winner out of you. He knows that it's the word that is, enables you to overcome every attack that he launches against you. So once again, keep a firm grip on the promises that keep you going because God always keeps his word. Say it with me one more time. My God is a faithful God. And then say this, he always keeps his word. Do you believe that today? Are you convinced of that? Praise God, I am. I think you can see that I'm thoroughly convinced of that. But I want you to get to the place where you're convinced of that. This is something that is so vital and so important to you living a life of victory. You have to become uh, so convinced that God is faithful and so convinced that God keeps his word. I like to say it this way. You need a, to possess a deep conviction of the reality that it is impossible for God to lie, that God 
is a faithful God. And if you have a deep conviction of the reality of that, then praise God, your days of losing, your days of defeat, your days of failure are over. Praise God. I didn't say you won't ever be attacked by the devil again. I just said your days of living in defeat will be over because praise God, you know that you know that you know that God is faithful, that he keeps his word and praise God, he's not going to allow any weapon that is formed against you to prosper. I think you ought to give him a good shout about that. Praise God. Hey, listen, I want to encourage you to watch the announcement that's coming up and uh, be sure and order the resources that we make available to you because they'll help you in learning how to continue to stand and fight the good fight of faith. I'll be back in just a few moments. God will never say it's over until you win. In Quitting is Not an Option, Jerry Savelle teaches what the Bible says about conquering the temptation to quit. In this encouraging four CD series, you will learn how to stay focused in faith by being truly convinced God will keep his word, being willing to wait by developing patience, and being in fellowship with God in his word. You can receive victory in every area of your life. God is looking for a group of winners to rise up and show the world that he is greater. In the powerful book, Called to Battle, Destined to Win, Jerry shares how you can experience God's breakthrough power in your life. God will provide everything you need to pursue, overtake, and recover what has been lost. Are you ready to win? Call or go online to jerrysavelle.org and request the Born to Win package, including Quitting is Not an Option and Called to Battle, Destined to Win. Make the decision today to never give up, to never quit, and to watch what your persistence will produce. Hey, I really hope that you were inspired today. I trust that your faith is being enlarged and going to another level because I want you to become the winner that God has called you to be. And that's the reason we make these resources available to you. This is a book that I wrote some time back. It's entitled Called to Battle, Destined to Win, Experiencing God's Breakthrough Power in Your Life. This is a book that I believe once you start, you'll not be able to put it down. It says, let the champion in you arise, praise God. And then four CDs on the subject, quitting is not an option. You know, I can't cover all the material on television and these broadcasts that I cover in a live service where I had at least an hour, maybe an hour and a half to develop this and talk about it and share many more scriptures, many testimonies. That's why you need to get it on CD so that you can listen to it in the privacy of your home or in your automobile. And uh, I believe, praise God, if you sit down with the whole family and listen to them together, praise God, you're going you're gonna to develop a, a winning team there, praise God. And I believe God will honor your faith just like he honors mine. So go online or get the information off the screen right now and order these products. Do it right away. And once again, I believe that you won't regret it. It's going to help you build some strong faith and become the winner that God wants you to be. We're going to continue this study next week, so be sure and join with me. And until then, remember this, your faith will overcome the world.